So I'm back for episode three of the Women in Sports podcast and I'm really excited this week that we're not going to be speaking just about rugby, we're going to be speaking about a different sport and, and learning loads of new stuff to do with that and today I'm really, really excited to be joined by the England and Great Britain champion in Hammersrow, Jess Mayo, how are you? Hey Lois, how are you doing? I'm all right, thank you, I'm all right. How are you, how are you keeping sane in the, in the current situation? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I've probably got it pretty lucky. Um, a lot of people going out there and actually on the front line, and I guess all we need to kind of do is just stay at home. Um, so for me, like, I'm just used to so much structure all the time with training, like you'll understand, and like, training and work, and I've tried to kind of keep that structure a little bit. Um, so still kind of getting up quite early, like going out training in the morning, um, coming back, like doing some work, eating, training in the afternoon and doing some more work and yeah just trying to keep that structure because otherwise without the structure I'd be, I'd be going crazy. <laughs> I know the structure is the key and I think doing these podcasts is a good one for me because it means that you actually have to get up and put a bit of makeup on, do your hair and be prepared for it otherwise <laughs> I think I'm going to be First time in like three weeks, I've actually done something. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad I've given you an excuse to uh, get dressed up and ready to talk to the, the webcam and, and speak to me about training. I follow you on Instagram um, and I've, I've seen some of the, the training scenes. What What's that been like in and around with your neighbours? Um, yeah, interesting actually. <laughs> no, the first few times I got a few funny looks and like passers by were just like looking, especially when I've got like the. Um, when I'm doing squats and I've got it balanced on two wheelie bins. People are just like, is she crazy? Um, but yeah, like after that, everyone like people are just kind of wanting to know like what you're doing, like what like some of my neighbours don't really know what I do. So yeah, it was just being quite a good conversation starter, I guess. Um <laughs> and yeah, it's just trying to trying to still train and trying to just adapt to what what I've kind of got use of really. We're lucky to get the um gym equipment um some gym equipment from Implexus so I've been you know been trying to set up a little bit of a home gym but I don't have the luxury of a garage so it's just <laughs> groom and bear it outside so some days with like a woolly hat on some days you're down to like training a crop top and leggings like it's just standard British weather and you just crack on really some would say uh, crazy, but I think that's pretty creative using the wheelie bins it's um it's a, it's a good way to, to look at it and I think that's like you're saying it the fact that um neighbors are looking and thinking like what on earth is she doing i wonder why she's doing that because it's probably not you know I, I haven't seen anyone doing it in my street so it is a great way of you spreading you know what you're doing and, and getting the word out there about the hammer throw, isn't it yeah definitely like there's um a little path outside my house where i've been doing quite a lot of drills and turns um so yeah so any dog walkers just seeing a, a girl throwing a dumbbell in circles they're just going to be like what is she doing but actually yeah they do ask and they, you know they ask kind of what what I do and how good I am at it or like where I compete and yeah it's kind of it's kind of nice just to have a bit of conversation obviously like with the two meter gap and stuff but yeah it's just it's just nice to kind of have have that chat with people really and, and what about that reaction when they ask you how good you are and you kind of have to just do that awkward, like, oh, I'm all right. This, you're like, I'm, I'm an England champion. No, 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 no. Like, yeah, you kind of say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm right. Like, but to be fair, like, before I did it, I just thought it was strong people throwing a ball on a wire. So, but now I actually do it. It's such a technical event that I definitely didn't give it the credit it deserved before doing it but I guess that's like it is with anything really you know any sport until you're in it and you know what it's about you don't really know kind of everything everything that kind of takes to get there yeah well I've, I've got big respect loads of stuff we'll speak about the fact that it's an individual sport the fact of how many like you say it's very technical how many different things that you've got to consider and work on in your training and we'll speak about that all all throughout this but the biggest thing that I was thinking, because I, I get asked quite a bit about, you know, like rugby, like how did you get into rugby? But like, I've never done, I've never done Hammer ever, like not even in like high school. You, you used to do the the three, didn't you? Of discus, chopper and all that sort of stuff, javelin. So like, how did you get into it? What, what stage did you give it a go and work out that you're not too bad? Um, so my sister was a really good cyclist um, and her strength and conditioning coach. Um, they'd been chatting in the gym and she said, oh, my sister's really tall for her age. I was 16 at the time. And um, 
so he said oh I'll bring her into the gym and he was um he was a strength and conditioning coach but he was also a hammer throwing coach so I went in and just kind of did some exercise with him nothing with a lot of weight um but he said you know why don't you come down to the track um now I'd been a member of like a local athletics club for years but um never as you said never tried hammer throwing because it's just not that accessible um and so yeah I went down to the track and tried it with Mike and I was shocking I was absolutely <laughs> like I was here there and everywhere I mean I was falling over but I probably provided some entertainment for everyone but it was for some reason I kept on going back and I think it was that challenge and it was something different um I'd done loads of different sports like I'm one of three so I've got two big sisters and I just, yeah, we've all kind of been involved with sport and tried everything, which I think is like really important not to like focus on an in, uh, an event so young. Um, so I'm quite glad that I've had that that broad range of, of trying things. And I played a lot of netball, um, but I'd had shin splints and, you know, the different injuries along the way. And yeah, just kind of tried hammer throwing and it was actually... It was weird because I wasn't good, but I wanted to still go back. And it was like that challenge every time. Every session was was hard in different ways. And, yeah, for some crazy reason, I kept on going. And, yeah, here I am. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, the sport itself and, and you're definitely very, very glad that you, you kept going back. Do you think it's the fact that it's, like, I always think about rugby. Like, when I was growing up, no one else used to play it. And I think I quite like that, that it were it were unique to you and and – I don't know, the, the fact that it was different, that you, you wanted to do it a little bit more. Do you think you felt like that? Yeah, definitely. I think I used to did used to play quite a lot of netball and it was I was at that level where, you know, they said, look, you can go for England screening um, or, you know, you, you look at your athletics. And, and I'd kind of got to a point where sometimes we'd go training and, you know, other people maybe, you know, they might have been out the night before or, you know, there was their... their other people weren't coming to the court maybe as fresh as I was or vice versa on some days. Um, and it kind of just got to the point where I was like, I want to do something. So if I have a good day, then it's on my shoulders. But if I have a bad day, that's also kind of mine to work on. Um, and so, yeah, like it's it, it does have its challenges. Um, but, yeah, like I'm, I'm kind of glad that I, I did stick at it um, and gave it a proper go. I think that that's really interesting. I didn't even really think about that as a reason for for maybe well, I did and I didn't, but like wanting to do an individual sport. Like you think about that when you're in part of a team, it can take one person to to kind of disrupt that sort of like team ethos that you've got by some behaviours. And I never really thought about the fact of you know how much that made a difference. But then on the flip side, you know you're in a sport where it must be quite tough because there's disqualifications. You know injuries go through them kind of not on your own but you, you kind of are on your own um, and then you know like getting consistency so I, I've obviously I've done my research you're, I, you're impressed with my professionalism I, I already know but like saying that you want to get that plateau in the in the throw because if at least you can consistently get that but how do you deal with the fact that you're maybe not getting to that point? Yeah I mean it's been it has been a journey um and one that I think I've definitely grown with as well. Um, so I started when I was 16, but I went to university. And I did like the university life and I actually got back into netball and hammer kind of, I'd go once a week, but it was like two trains and two buses to get to the mighty Clyke Eaton <laughs> to, go, <laughs> to go and train with everyone. And um, so that was a challenge. So it did take a back seat, but then coming out of uni, it was, it was the, other people kind of going for their proper jobs um or grad jobs and I, I moved back home with my parents because I wanted to go to the Olympics yeah um, and yeah it was that kind of like not it, it's maybe not what other people would kind of put out there um as to the ideal route but it's that kind of you are on your own and you are in the driving seat of it um and you know you can put as much or as little in and you, you'll see the results of of both outcomes then um and you know for me it's been since graduating from university I was 21 then um 26 now so it's been five years of what I'd feel like it's been like the proper journey really of, of my throwing um and I look back now and I'm like oh 
if only I knew what I know now when I was 21. But then you you just got to accept that, that that's sport and that's kind of that's that's my journey and it's individual to everyone. Um and and it's life, you know, what what you know now in life is different to what you know when you're 18 or 16 or, or 21, you know. And, and it's that kind of knowing that each each year I'm building my like toolbox of stuff that I, I know about myself, the way that my body operates, um, the psychological side of things. Like you said, competitions, um, disqualifications, which have happened. Um, but without them happening, you can't, it sounds cliche, but you can't learn from it. Like yeah. you, you need them to happen and I'd rather them happen now at a point where I'm in my career where it's, you know, I'm still, I'm still kind of trying to bridge that gap to world level, um, but happen now rather than happen when I am on a world stage. Um, so yeah, so it, it is a journey, but it's although it's one that I'm on on my own, I'm not because I've got such a such a good support network. It's it's a group of us really. No, that's brilliant. And I think the one thing that I sort of took from that is you just can't skip any part of the journey, can you? It's kind of everything does happen for a reason and. Even at the time, you just think you, you can't really work it out. But I think that everything's there, and you can't you can't brush past that, can you? So yeah, I think like like you you'll know yourself, Lois, with injuries in 2017. I had an injury, and it tests you, doesn't it? Like it tests how like how much you actually want it. Like how much you want to keep doing this. Like when your friends are going out partying every weekend, or they've got they've got the flexibility to go for you know. To just go out whenever they want, go on holidays, you know, when when they want and can, and and it does kind of just reassess things. Um, and like I don't know about yourself, but for it, when I was in my injury process, I I had a really good support team and and tried to see it as an opportunity rather than a, a negative. And actually, it was a it was a point where I could actually strip everything back and go, okay, what is working in the setup that I've got, um, and what's not, and what maybe do we need to change and that that was probably the best thing that could have hindsight is a great thing but it's probably the best thing that could have happened was ha actually having that injury because sometimes when you're in that like merry-go-round of life aren't you? you 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 just kind of keep going and you see some results so you kind of tick along but you don't actually have that time to sit back which injury actually forces you to have um to sit back and and reassess um and yeah like I was just I was itching to get back and that's when I knew that I'd just not I'd not finished what I'd started out to do um and I'd always said right from the beginning like I'm gonna keep going until a I'm not good enough um to be at the level that I want to be at or b I stop enjoying it because I think if you don't have the love there for it there's only so much trudging in the mud and wind and rain that you can do if, if you if you have fallen out of love with it um so yeah so it, it, it's it's still a journey that I'm, I'm loving so definitely I think you're right on what you say with with injury I think it teaches you more than you'd, you'd ever know I know that um we, we've spoke often and stuff when I see you because you 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 work at the home of where Lee Rhinos women play so I see you quite often up there um but it, it does teach you a lot about yourself and you can't and I, I'll agree with you on that the fact that when you do get injured it gives you time to put things into perspective and really really think about what process you've got in place so when I was injured it was you know like even like your work like what what do I want to do in work am I am I am I enjoying that side as much as I want to do that or what can I do to make my job better how can I give more because when you like you say when you are stuck in that routine of get up you go to the gym you go to work you train you and you do it all over again don't you um, and yeah. it's it, it's probably a really good thing in hindsight like you say and I mean, on that journey, you, you're smashing it at the minute. 2019, what what a year! Just talk us through that PB champion. Yeah, uh, no, I was I was really lucky. Uh, 2017, at the end of 2017, I had the injury, I had my knee surgery. Um, 2018, um, we yeah, we were just trying to we use that as a as a year, just trying just to get back into it. Um, you know, you had not had a winter. So our our season goes from February really to September, right. and then the rest of that is winter training. So I'd not really had a winter of training. Um, I didn't end up coming out and competing until May of 2018. So that was just kind of I threw I think it was 62 and a bit meters. Um, 
but you know it was that always kind of looking at where I was like t- eight months ago and I, I, I was I was doing like isometric exercises because that's all I could do so it was that kind of always trying to look at like how far we'd come but not kind of looking too much at that and just always kind of wanting to go forwards and so 2018 winter I had a really good winter um training um I got a new coach um decided to keep it local and find a coach in Portugal <laughs> and, um, so yeah so I've um, got a new coach and um so that was like 2018 and then going into 2019 um basically 2018 in September we'd sat down in this Spanish cafe and we'd wrote, written out what we want to achieve in 2019 um so we made our list and just the two of us knew what we wanted to, um you know to get and and to do and um yeah I'm just I was just so chuffed that I could get everything that we'd put down on that list by the end of the 2019 season um and you know I got a first GB uh, selection I got England selection through PBs and I had a healthy body and that for me was just it was so key because it was finishing like the 2018 season I finished on 62 meters but I finished healthy and I was fit to go into a good winter then and it sometimes you just kind of got to take it back to that like yeah we're in a time at the moment now where we might not be able to do the sessions that we want to do you know the heavy lifting sessions or the throwing sessions but actually like what can we do and like we are healthy so actually if you've got if you've got your health then then you're pretty pretty good aren't you um yeah 2019 was a dream I just got to back it up now (laughs) (laughs) well when you get going I've got I've got all faith in you so 2019 (laughs) through a best of 66.4 meters that's class what what do you reckon your first throw was at that at that um track back it when you were 16 or whatever (laughs) god lord I don't think you have made it to the grass (laughs) they went in the wrong direction No, but all joking aside, absolutely class, and I'm really, really glad that after coming through, obviously the injury, I know it is tough. Like the the rehab, I, I see. I were looking. I were I were part of a squad. So when I were going through, um, back in the 2017. No, yeah, back in the 2018 into 2019, I created my own little rehab club. So anyone who got injured at rugby, I were kind of like, welcome into my friendship group, and um, we all laugh yeah. about it now. But that that's what got me through. Yeah, and that's completely like that side of things you really do miss like I miss the banter I miss that kind of support network within your team um and so yeah solo sports do have the pros but they've also definitely got the cons um and yeah like you know the amount of even this year you know in January I just sat it was windy it was rainy I was throwing and I'm in this field in the middle of nowhere throwing and yeah the rain's battering down standard Yorkshire weather really and I'd had a rubbish session my body was tired everything you know you just got doms in I just sat on a stone and cried (laughs) (laughs) I've had enough like you know when you just feel like you're getting tested all the time and I was like I've had enough I'm done (laughs) and like I look back on that now I'm like I actually probably needed to just do that and it's really okay just to have those times just to have your moment but just don't stay there yeah and like I had a few days away from training and routine and I think I needed that and then like it's it's a long time for basically for throwers that can't do indoors like shot put they can do indoors but for us we've got to wait till the summer season so you start your like winter training in September and so by January you're just like you're itching to kind of know where you are like what what kind of condition you're in like how far you can throw in a competition but it's it's January so you, the coach is trying to put the brakes on you and not like you know keep your head down and keep focused but you just kind of want that that like confirmation that you you're doing okay and I think in, in that time in January I was I, I didn't have that confirmation and then we had a competition in February then um, and that went well so it was a kind of like oh, okay relax now and just kind of keep keep plodding away at it and it'll it'll come good in, in that aspect it's quite it's quite similar to rugby in the fact that pre-season is always very very challenging very very testing and I was just thinking oh I think about you know what we could what what sort of things would be important to speak about and 
I've tried I've tried to get one of your mates involved in rugby. I don't, I don't know if you do, I'm going to say you, but Chloe, <laughs> you train with it in Plexus. Oh, yeah, yeah. The when we first ever launched Lead Rhinos Women, um, I said to her, I, I, we need to do the photo shoot. So we needed, um, I had a netballer do it, Chloe, and then um, a younger girl from who played community rugby to do like all the, all the photos. And uh, yeah. I've been told that she's pretty quick. So I tried to say, like, you know, you should give it a go and she won't have none of it. Have you ever thought about it? You've watched some of our games up at Wheatwood. What do you reckon? I think I'd probably just be like, just have the ball and I'd probably run the other way. <laughs> You no, completely like fair play to you guys like I would yeah if somebody was coming at me ready to take me out I'd be like have it at least you get pass it far for somebody <laughs> I'd just be like go along and just chuck it far as long as it's sideways and not forwards would be all right <laughs> So you, you touched on it earlier. Um, you went local, and uh, your new coach is, is situated in Portugal. So, like, talk of, like it, George is it George? Yeah, 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 George Rodriguez. Um, well, how did that come about? And um, well, yeah. <laughs> so there'd been a group of us um, that had gone out for a warm weather training camp in Portugal, and we'd, we'd always kind of go to the Algarve at the bottom um, where everyone else kind of goes, but it got a bit hectic. It was basically like Brits abroad um, on throwing. Um, so I said to the guys, I was like, let's try find somewhere else. So I've got recommended this place. Um, it's about an hour north of Porto. Um, so, yeah, so I, I booked it. We, we all went out there and it's basically just a big field with like four throwing circles and a big bunker shed, um, really glamorous. Um, and um, yeah, so we all went out there and I was with my old coach at the time, um, who I'm just so grateful that's, you know, that stuck by me and, and kind of, you know, took me through that transition of where I was at uni into when I was 21. And um, we all went out there and George actually said to my coach at the time, Matt, he said, that girl will throw far. And that was, his English was so limited, um, but that was the first thing that he said. And I remember Matt telling me that, and it just kind of stuck with me. Like, he just really believed in me. Um, and so, yeah, that relationship was kind of, we, we kept in touch um, when I came back to the UK. Um, and Matt was happy for me to kind of go out there when, if and when I could, um, to, to do some training with George. Um, and yeah, we we decided that I was going to make that move over um, and have George coach me full time. And yeah, it's just been it's it's been a journey. Like my Portuguese is still so bad, <laughs> but it's his English has got so much better. Um, and in a way, like he because his the vocabulary isn't that vast, it's quite just basic instructions, which I think sometimes good when you're being coached because you don't want to be bombarded with loads of information yeah. so when it's just like short phrases that he can say to me about his feedback sometimes that's good um I don't know about yourself but I'm such an overthinker as well so yeah. if I'm given too much information and my head's just fried so for me it was really good and yeah that relationship just kind of grew over time so he's been coaching me now for the last few years um and yeah we've done really well and it, it has been a team effort um and you know not just with George but you know people I've got back here and uh, nutrition psycho psychologists physio you know everyone and so when I do get like the selections or the good results it's it's not just me it's it's a we it's like we did it because it is like those are the kind of people you don't see because they're not the ones chucking but the ones behind the scenes you know and 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 with, and with him, he so a lot of his well, all of his coaching is over WhatsApp and video calls. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so just to make it easy for us all, <laughs> I thought I want to have a coach there in in person. We just go for WhatsApp video calls. So yeah, so he's in, um, he's in Portugal, um, at the throwing centre there. Um, I'm at my throwing centre, which is you know, again just a, a big field and a, a throwing circle, and um, put him up on my tripod, which again gets some funny looks from dog walkers. And um, yeah, we just we just have a one hour, two hour session, um, and yeah, just it's it's good. He's as I say, his English has got really good now, so the feedback is is good, and we can have 
we have a lot more chats outside of just hammer throwing now because he does he, he he's got to know me um and when i go over over there i stay with him and his family so i really have no excuse for not knowing portuguese um <laughs> no not really it, it's it's it works it's unique um but actually like there's people now that when we're in this in you know in this lockdown that are trying to coach um their athletes virtually so i feel like oh well i'm a little bit of a heads up on that one no, i feel like i feel like he should do a podcast on it like john tell the world exactly how he's been doing it for the past two years and be absolutely killing it and and, and on that so we speak about you spoke about nutrition there like how how i think that's what a lot of people will find tough in this sort of isolation period where i keep seeing memes everywhere about like the only tan i'm getting is off the light in the fridge and you know, <laughs> you know so I'm like, how are you finding it yeah well i put one on the other day and it was um a more from love island actually and it was like when you think <laughs> what my fridge sees and it was just my face the whole time because i'm just constantly looking and i think that goes back to structure like yeah. when you've got the structure then i find i'm okay like i kind of try to eat when i would normally if i'm if i was working and training um but it's like on a Sunday when I've got a rest day, I'm just in, like, I'm just around the house. I don't have that much structure. I'm like, I can just hear the chocolate in the cupboard saying my name, you know? <laughs> well, you <laughs> know, I just don't don't I'm just like, if it's there, I'll eat it. So just don't buy it, Jess. <laughs> They're the same conversations I have with myself going around the shop, and I've, I have to go when I'm not hungry. Yeah. Uh, I'm hung- I've, I've once actually walked around the shop put loads of stuff in the basket and then like looked at it and had this, you have that person on that shoulder and then the other person on that shoulder, that person like, yeah, that all looks really good. That one, you need to walk around the shop now and put it all back where it was because you don't need to eat that. But I've tried baking because I've got time. I never have time. I'm usually either, you know, coaching on a Saturday, game on a Sunday, um, coaching Tuesday night, Thursday night, uh, Monday night and sometimes out on a Wednesday. So I've like got time and I think, well, you know, everyone's probably thinking, let's try something new. So other other than speak, uh, learning more Portuguese, are you doing a bit of baking as well? Well, I've, there's not been any flour in the shops. Like I said to you earlier, you're actually propped up on my only thing of flour. So if it falls back, I'm not going to be any baking this week. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. so being, being trying to be good, to be honest, and not being, everyone's been baking banana bread. I've baked one. I don't know why everyone's chosen banana bread, but anyway. Um, but yeah, I think it's the temptation into it of, because I'm living on my own as well. If I bake, it's only me that's going to eat it. So <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be dropping it off like at different people's house. Like my hours exercise, I'd be like, Mum, brother, drop it off. I can't even in the house because otherwise I'll eat it. Yeah, if you, Lois, I'd be like, Mum, brother, <laughs> I'll just eat them all. So on that though, I can tell you the reason that people are baking banana breads from the worst baker ever it's because they're easy if i can make a banana bread anyone can make a banana bread and that is the only reason people are making them (laughs) (laughs) but on that anyway so spoke about like trying to keep structure and trying to keep like i guess professional and like committed to the cause even though it seems like so far away at the moment and what i wanted to speak to you about is because we get this in rugby and the fact that the girls are playing at an elite level however you know, it's not, it's not, it's not your, it's not your only job. You've got to do your day job, and some of them are mums. Some of them, you know, are, are really tough and demanding day jobs, and they have to do that. And then the sport kind of is not. I wouldn't say it comes after because it done. It kind of sits to the side, so they've got a lot to do. And that's a big thing that I like to speak about. Is you know, what does the professionalism and the commitment mean to you, and how do you kind of balance that, and, and why is it so important? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, it's it, it, it's hard. There's no sugarcoating that, you know. There's there's times where I wish that I, I didn't have to work, um, but then you quickly realise that actually I'm I'm lucky that I'm able to be in the position where I, I do have a job, and it's it's kind of thinking of that plan B as well in the back of your head, not because you want the plan B to happen, but if sports taken away from you tomorrow, like what have you got? Um, and I think that's maybe like trying to have the positive outlook of like, balancing a full, like for myself, a full time job and training twice a day, six days a week, you know, and trying to trying to balance everything. 
it, it is it is hard and but I know that I'm not the only person that's trying to do that so you know I can't like I'm not wanting sympathy for that at all it's it's just how well you can sometimes balance all the plates into it and I think with as women in sport and at elite level I think it's moving in the right direction like the opportunities that that young girls and young women have now got compared to 10 years ago it has improved massively and I think that's so exciting for the sport um like all sports and I think it hopefully in time it'll get to that point where like you said you know the the, the women's rugby at an elite level they might have the opportunity of being full-time and, and that'd be amazing to see see that happen um but yeah I think just trying to see like it as a positive that I do work because I think if I was just constantly training, like I'd be, con- I'd be always thinking about that session that might not have gone well, or I'd be, con- you know, thinking about thinking about it too much, just in general. Whereas, like, I'll go train, I'll get a shower, come back, like I'm I'm back in the office, and I'm there getting like bands thrown at me left, right, and centre from the guys in the office. You know that kind of thing where it's just like you you're back into that environment and you can't. You leave, you've got to leave that session on on the field. You can't be bringing like the bad into work and work onto the onto the field. So it is it is quite good to be able to learn to to switch off. You're just trying to have that positive outlook on it, really. That it is it is hard to work full time and train, but it is what it is, and it's the life I've chosen. So just crack on. A healthy distraction and, and potentially when everything goes to plan and you you kind of achieve everything you want to achieve, that makes it even sweeter, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, it's it's definitely it's a luxury to be able to to train full time. And um, I think people, some people might not realise like how good they've got it until until they've, they've then got to go to, to work or, you know, to, to balance everything. And like like you said, it, it's, it's just a challenge and it's one that like I've chosen to take. So, yeah, you just you just got to get on with it. So, so speaking about that challenge, then what what are your goals moving forward? What's the what's the um, sort of like two or three year or four year plan look like? Yeah, so this year um, we wanted to get selection for the European Throwing Cup, which was um, a couple of weekends ago in Portugal, which we got, which was great. Um, but then it got cancelled because of everything that's going on, which is understandable. Um, and the British Championships now have been pushed back a couple of months. So we don't know. They've, well, they've been pushed back till August um, and the England Championships as well. Um, not too sure what's going on with them just yet. But long term and um, beyond this year, obviously Tokyo has been moved back a year. Um, so that lets me get another year of, year of throwing and, and lifting and technique work under my belt and, and see what happens. Um, so just seeing that as, as an opportunity that, you know, that's now there. Um, that we can we can add into our add into our goals, but the um, yeah 2022 we've got home Commonwealths obviously in Birmingham um, and the World Championships as well in 2022. So I mean it sounds mad that we're talking about two years away, but it just flies and you know in, it, that's like that's only two it's two seasons and we're already halfway through one of them. So yeah, it's it, it's good to have those goals, but I think it's also kind of good just to take it day by day. Um, Otherwise, like I don't know about yourself, you can get so hung up about I, I need to make this team, I need to make this team, I need to, but actually, like you're so focused on that, you're missing out on what you're doing every day, and it's those everyday sessions that you need to build up and build up to create that outcome. Um, but yeah, that I mean, my 21 year old self might not have thought that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like you say, I think it's a great thing in your sport to have that maturity because one, like speaking to you, I'm finding it just dead interesting just how you sort of how everything's come about and how like how how grounded you are and how smart you are with what you're saying, what you're doing, and and you're absolutely smashing it. But then it's just a great, great out uh, attitude to have and a great outlook to have, and it, it's brilliant and. I was thinking, obviously, we've spoke about how you, you got into to Hammer and, like, where do you want it to go for sort of, like, I feel like it's on a bit of a similar journey to rugby. Like, with rugby, it's kind of got bigger and bigger. When I first started doing the development officer job at Leeds, like, it it, it, were, it were here and, and it's moved all the way across, not 
not because of me, because of the great work that is going on in the community and um, the RFL, making sure that this, like in last year, the women's final were live on Sky. Did when you first got into Hammer, did you have any role models? And also, like, I know you're going to school, so speak to me a bit about like that. Like, how how good is that? How is how much is that making a difference? Yeah. So role model wise, I I don't. I don't know. I don't. There's some people like so fixated on one person, but I kind of like qualities from different people. Yeah. Um, but also like people that I kind of work with on a daily basis or speak to on a daily basis, like their attributes. I'm like, yeah, I really like that. Like how hard working they are, or like how passionate they are about something, or you know, the the kind of the, what they'll put themselves through to to get there. And you know, I've I've got such an amazing family and. And, you know, I look up to them. Um, both my sisters have been in sport to a high level. And, you know, I, I look at them and what they've achieved and how they've achieved it. And, I, yeah, I guess they're, 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 they're my role models as well, like mum and dad. And, you know, it's sometimes they don't have to be these celebrities or, like, you know, I've got I've got such appreciation for, like, Jess Ennis and, like, seeing the journey that she's been on and, like, listen to some of her podcasts. And that's amazing. Um but yeah, I think sometimes you don't want to compare yourself too much to people either uh, or strive to be so much like somebody because, yeah, we're all different, aren't we? Um, but yeah, going into schools has been interesting. Like, um, <laughs> I mean, I'd taken my hammers and the, like I've taken a couple of hammers and some medals and stuff and, and they're just like looking at me like, who is this crazy lady? Like, it's not what you'd not, like a runner would take into running, sh- running spikes or something like that, but... Yeah, a hammer is just like out there, but it gets her attention, which is actually quite good. Um, and it's been really interesting, really quite rewarding to go in. And like there was this one girl, and oh, it, she said to me, she said, um, I, so we did like we did a, a lesson together um, of the kind of the drills that I do in my warm ups and um, stuff like that. And she just said to me, she was like, I've been told I'm never going to be good at anything. And for me, that was just like, absolutely she said um she said I've been told I'm not, not going to be good at anything I'm too big I was like absolutely not and um so once the session had finished we just had a little bit of a chat um and that for me was just really nice to be able to um have that because people might not have the upbringing that I've had you know as, as I said really supportive family and some people might not have been lucky enough to have that that support. And, you know, we're all good at something. We might just not have found it yet. Um, and so going into schools has been, it's been entertaining, like the questions that you get. Go on, but, you yeah, like, never any. Um, I, I really wish I could. Like after, I'd, after I come out from the schools and I catch up with like mum or dad and um, we're just chatting about it and, and it's brilliant. It's just so, they're just so raw, aren't they? And they just say there's no filter to them. I love that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's entertaining, but it's, it is really rewarding just kind of, just to be able to speak to people that might not have, have people making time for them elsewhere um yeah it's been pretty good I I always said when I first started my job at the foundation I was speaking I think to me and you used to be a teacher and I I said like you should probably write a book even if it's just for yourself like write everything that the kids have said then if you're having a tough day just go back and read it or you know it might even be a seller as a as a bestseller because they're honestly the class some of the stuff that they come out with um and they make the day look better but but on that it's that's probably similar with, with rugby and brilliant that you're getting that opportunity to to like inspire girls and give them that confidence because like with rugby it's there's 13 players on a, on a field and none of them are, none of them are the same they're all different they've all got different attributes so whether you're the one who's quick and can run really fast or you're the one who's tougher and can run through anything or you're the smart one who works out how to you know run but not get caught or and things like that there's a space for everyone and I think that's a really important message that that you're you're giving out in those schools because it's a bit similar to you'd always played netball and someone had that belief that you'd be good at at Hammer and then the coach with George believing in you kind of how much confidence that gives you and how important that is is to your life because it kind of paves that way of taking healthy decisions and taking decisions that you know could set you on a career path like 
I never thought playing rugby would mean that I'd done all the things that I have, and I have, and I'm sure you're the same with Hannah. That's so, the good thing about sport, though, Lois. Like, you know, it's not just, yeah, we th- I throw a ball on a wire, or you guys, you, you throw a ball around. It's not just that. Like, the amount of, like, skills and and knowledge that you that you are transferable over you know as you'll as you'll know now you're retired like stuff that you've learned through sport it, it, it is so transferable and and that's why like there's so much when you're going into these schools and you're speaking to them there's so much that sport can give and it's just trying to show that to them it's not just about what I'm bringing in which is the medals and and the the England vest it, it's about like your friendship groups you know how you can deal with things mentally, you know, your perseverance level, you know, and commitment. And there's so many more things that sport can just give apart from medals. And that's like, that's really good to kind of see as well. 100%, 100% agree, 100% agree. And on that on that stuff that you spoke about, the, the girl saying that, you know, she's been told that I think you said she's too big, she won't be able to do that, whatever. But you, you've like been quite outspoken in regards to like body image and stuff like that. You had like quite a negative... Um, what was I trying to say? A negative experience, that's what I'm thinking. Mine went blank then. Um, and you you were quite open with that. And I see it all the time in schools about girls thinking they have to be a certain way to do sport or to do a particular sport. Like, how important is it for you to sort of, like, break down those barriers, especially associated with sports like rugby and hammer? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I'm still breaking down the barrier for myself, to be honest. Um, you know, there's there's in the gym I don't know about yourself but in the gym like I'm I feel strong I feel like powerful or when I'm throwing the hammer I feel strong feel powerful and then you take that gym kit off and you go into like a normal public scenario where you're wearing just normal clothes and you think oh my legs look really big or my legs look my arms look really big and like sometimes I do still think that you know we've all we've all got our own hang-ups I know but and it is that kind of actually Jess your legs are not big, they're strong because you can squat however, you know, however many kilos. Well, what's your PB? I'm interested. <laughs> yeah, 220. Jesus, that's class. Yeah, I'm yeah. About, about 120 off that. <laughs> that's right. I'm also probably a lot heavier than you, Chloe. <laughs> probably not. Not I'm, my I'm way, I'm um, But yeah, it's like, actually, you need to think, it's my body and it's, it's the way that I'm built to be able to do what I'm currently doing, like, it's not going to be my body size for the rest of my life, but to be able to throw a hammer, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do that if I was the shape of a high jumper, for example. So it's understanding which, you know, I am sometimes I do have my majority of the time I'm fine. It's, it's sometimes, you know, everyone does have those days, don't they? And, and it's actually then going, well, Jess, you've got a body that's actually working and it's doing pretty well. You know, it's healthy and it's what you need it for for your event. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's 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 it is hard sometimes the body image and the perception that people have. Um, you know, when I when I tell people to say, "Oh, what do you do?" and I'm I say, oh, "I'm a hammer thrower," you know, you can imagine the response you get. Oh, well, I thought that was big people. You know, I thought that that was yeah. fat people. Or and it's and I I'm just like, no. I said, you know, it's actually strong people. And, you know, there's there's girls that I compete against that are bigger than me or the smaller than me, but I've got the appreciation for them all that that's the way that they're built and, and they're doing the best that they can with what they've got, with their figure. And just embracing that, you know, everyone's different, aren't they? You know, yeah. you're not, there's no, there's no kind of, you shouldn't you shouldn't have to be a, tip, a, a stero- you know, a typical body shape to be able to do something um and you know although it does help for instance you know like I said high jumper being you know slighter than myself because you've got less weight to take over the bar you've got that spring in you you know but it's just that kind of understanding that actually the way that I am is is what I need it to be for for this for this time in my life at the moment well you're brilliant and I think you've got to realize that you know it's that thing people always um want what they haven't got as well and you there are people looking at you and being absolutely envious of she can squat 220 you know you to them will be exactly what they they'd want to look like and I think that it's right what you say is it's about what you need to be able to do with your body and I mean I remember like I've always had like quite big legs like quite big like thighs just because I think that's where like if I put on muscle or 
even if I put on weight, that's like as soon as where it goes to. So when I went through all my all like my um, surgery on on my leg, I lost like. I think I lost like 10 kilograms at least and ended up going down to like a size eight trousers. And it's always something that I thought I'd probably like, but then for me, it would just negative straight away because it's like, well, that actually just means my body can't do what I want it to do, but also like it's not how it probably should be. I Now I look back, I think actually you look you look pretty like, like yeah. compared to what I know you should be like and I'd much rather be able to be in the gym, even though I'm not playing anymore. I still want to be at a you know, prove to myself that I can do anything that I'd maybe ask a player to do. Like, that's probably just me. I'm a bit of a weirdo. But I think it's it's important that you look at what your body can do and how brilliant it is. And remember that there's always someone out there who would love to look e- exactly how you look. So I think you're doing a brilliant job in spreading that message in schools and, and you're doing a brilliant job for yourself. And I think um, a good way to finish off is, you know, we're in isolation. I keep asking people this. We're in isolation and people are thinking about new things to do. You're, you know, you're thinking about the fact that you need to learn more Portuguese um, and I'm thinking about doing less baking. But what what message have you got to anyone who's, who's watching, maybe thinking of giving Hammer a go or thinking of just giving something new a go because it's really important to, to step out of your comfort zone every now and again? Yeah, definitely. I think, like, going back to the start of our conversation, you know, I tried Hammer and I was shocking. <laughs> You know, and you might, but I really enjoyed it. So it might be that you try something and you might not be good at it, but you might just really enjoy that challenge um, or enjoy the headspace that it creates for you or enjoy, you know, it, it's not necessarily hammer throwing, but it's something that if that makes you tick, then why not carry on going with it? You know, like when I started, it wasn't necessarily what people thought I would do after finishing university when people were all going for grad jobs, but it made me tick and it was what, it was what I was really enjoying so people supported that and yeah I think it's if you find something that you like like why not just see how far you can go with it I think it's it's pretty good and and yeah and just lay off the bacon Lois I'll just send you my address <laughs> you don't you honestly don't want a delivery but Mark comes down and he'll just look and go what is that and I and he's why I bake stuff that I wouldn't like and I try to bake some healthy stuff and it it's backfiring because all the recipes go wrong Jess um you the Lois <laughs> life and it's been a success <laughs> <laughs> yeah well um it's been brilliant to talk to you jess thank you so much for um taking time i've taken a lot from that of just living the moment and everything happens so that you can get to the next point and i think that's a great message for you to send to everyone that perseverance is key and if you enjoy it that's all that matters um yeah. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best. 2019, McLaren. I hope 2020 is you stay healthy first and foremost. And um, I'm, I'm sure that you've got a massive future and you'll smash all those um, goals that you've got. So thank you so much, Lois. It's so good to see you. And so good to see like the next chapter that's happening for you as well. So. Oh, thank you. I'm maybe crying. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jess. Appreciate it. See you later. Resume. Bye. Bye.